I want you to turn your attention to the most exciting game of Tata Steel Chess Masters 2022. Not because of the game itself, but because of who are going to play it. It was the world champion Magnus Carlsen with the black pieces against the youngest participant of the event, Pragnananda, 16 year old. And it was a classical game and the first time that Carlsen and Prag played each other. So this is, these pictures are by Lena Tutis and you can see Carlsen, you know, fist bumping Prag. They both sat down with their masks to play and then, you know, uh, game began. You can see how Carlsen is holding his pen. This he often does when an opponent makes a move that he has not expected and he's thinking. So instead of writing the move, he first takes the pen, he's still thinking. And then when his thought is complete, he then writes it down. There is Magnus removing his mask, but Prag never removes his mask. Yeah, he always keeps it on. This is one thing that Prag has mastered the art of playing with a mask on, which is not easy if you consider that he has to wear it for like six hours at a stretch. And Magnus played without a mask <clears throat> for the rest of the game. Uh, also, very nice pictures taken by Lennart is of both the players approaching the playing hall. And there is Prag, you know, coming to the tournament hall all alone. Generally, he would come with Ramesh, his coach, but Ramesh is down with COVID. So he is right now in a quarantine. And Magnus comes with his entire team, his father and his second Peter Heine Nilsson. So let's have a look at this game. And I did some bit of uh, deep analysis because for me, this game was very, very exciting. And I hope that I can show you some interesting moments in this game. So let's get cracking. Uh, Magnus is... Uh, just a second, let me pull up, yeah. So, Magnus is black, Prag is white, and the game starts off with 1d4. Magnus responds with d5, c4, e6, queen's gambit declined and Prague goes knight f3 and now Magnus takes on c4. Now what really surprised me here is the fact that Magnus could have gone d take c4 on move number 2 as well to go for the queen's gambit accepted. Why did he choose to first go e6, knight f3 and then take? Well, the answer lies in looking through Prague's games, which I checked. And I saw that his last game when an opponent played d takes c4 was against Levon Aronian at Kolkata and there he had played e4. And maybe Carlsen is not 100% comfortable here and he wanted to avoid this. And that's why he played e6 and now took. Okay, Prague said, never mind, he took two minutes here. a6, bishop takes c4, knight f6 castles c5 and at this position Prague took another three minutes uh, clearly trying to choose between the different options that he had so one of the main moves is to take here the other one is to play a4 there's also bishop b3 there's also queen e2 here so clearly a lot of options but he went for b3 okay Magnus now played b6 and the reason why he didn't go b5 here is that after bishop e2, bishop b7, white generally plays a very typical idea in these structures. I would like you to pause the video and try to figure out what should white do here, white to play. Yes, the point here is to play a4. You can play it now or after bishop b2, but a4 provoking b4 and then putting your knight on d2 so that it then captures the c4 square. You can often also play a5 and fix the b6 square. So Magnus goes b6, kind of not pushing his pawn forward so that later it could be struck with, but clearly he wants to develop bishop b7. Now a natural move here is to put bishop b2 here, but Prag went after seven minutes of thought bishop a3 and I now doubt whether this was still his prep or he was trying to uh, kind of 
plate over the board but i get a feeling that he did remember some game because there is adiban versus yakoboye in this line which he might have seen uh Magnus went knight bd7 because clearly you don't want white to be taking here and giving you an isolated pawn. So knight bd7 makes a lot of sense. And now Prague played an important move. I would like you to pause the video and try to <coughs> figure out what should white play here. Right. So the move here is d5 and a very nice move because after take you take with the bishop and notice that black cannot go b5 because there is intermediate d takes e6 which spoils the black position so first you take bishop takes and now generally you don't want to be giving up your bishop just like that and let's say rook b8 but here the problem is that after bishop b2 black is not able to develop easily firstly his bishop cannot come out anywhere because of the g7 pawn hanging and if you play bishop b7 then after queen f5 the queen is very notoriously positioned knight c3 with the idea of rook d1 and knight d5 is also coming in okay so magnus decided let's move our rook away let's not bring the queen into the position and also we keep the knight here so that after bishop b2 this is not a problem okay now Prague dropped his bishop back, mission accomplished, he got in the d5 break which he wanted, bishop comes back on the long diagonal. Magnus developed his bishop to e7, knight came to c3, castles and now came queen c2. Okay, e4 was also possible here but queen c2 makes a lot of sense. Now always remember that in such positions, knight takes d5, knight takes d5 is to white's advantage. Why? Because after let's say something like bishop b7, I go rook d1 and my knight is just a monster and somehow coupled with this bishop, you are not able to get control of the f6 square and the rook is beautifully positioned, so is the queen. There are a lot of problems here. So that is the reason why you never want to take on d5. Here, Magnus played the first new move of the game, b5, after 22 minutes of thought. Clearly, Magnus was feeling a little bit worried. Uh, I guess h6 was another possible move here, so that later knight g5 ideas don't come in. But, okay, he played b5, which is fine. And here, I think Prague played a move which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, if you give this position to him in blitz or bullet, Prague would, without much thought, put rook a d1. The reason is that the other rook will come to e1 and you push e4. That's natural. But I guess after thinking for 9 minutes, he convinced himself that rook f d1 is better because at some point he can break with a4. I guess rook a d1 was a better move. Queen c7 was played and now Prague went a4. Makes sense. Bishop e4 was another very impressive idea here and could have been tried because you really can't take on e4 once again. I go knight d5. <laughs> I hit your queen and bishop and once you go back, I take with the queen once again with a dominating position for white. So bishop e4 and let's say you play h6, then I can drop my bishop back. Although I don't know what I've gained here and black can play bishop b7 with a nice position. So Bishop e4 may be not the best uh, there. Anyway, a4 was played in the game. And here came an interesting moment where Magnus could have pushed. And after knight e2, he can take rook takes. You notice how knight doesn't come to d5 now because he pushed it away. And now black to play. What would you play here? So two things, one is bishop b7 as a move, we'll come to it, but c4 is I think the is a great move here. b takes c4 and now even you can push b3 just to create play, but you can also play h6, very quiet move. The idea is that you want to put your piece on c5 and this is a positional pawn sacrifice and quite an interesting one. So c4 was 
to be considered here um but my question one more to you is what should white play here instead of c4 if you play bishop b7 <coughs> well done if you found the move knight f4 because after take take queen d8 rook d1 it it's excellent compensation here for white white has brilliant compensation and i like his position a lot uh, but if you were to move your rook away let's say rook d2 or something then after bishop takes f3 gf3 that could be a problem or also just rook b d8 and black is doing pretty well here like if you if you are trying to come to f4 here i will prevent it with knight f6 okay so b4 was clearly possible but magnus didn't go for it he went h6 waiting move here and also as we said h6 is in general a useful move in such positions Prag took, took and played queen to e2. Attacking b5. Once again, bishop e4 was possible, but he played queen e2. Now, um, it is important to defend this pawn, not pushing forward because of knight a4. So, <coughs> here, uh, sorry, if you go knight a4, then after knight d5, rook d5, bishop b7, black is better. But there is a good move here for white, not knight a4, but knight b5, queen b6 and bishop c4. So that was Pragnananda's point. Magnus sees through all these little tricks, yeah, positional tricks. He's, that's why he's considered as one of the best positional players. He plays queen b6. And here Prag was a little bit, you know, in a position where he didn't understand what to do. He pushed his pawn to e4, which is a nice move. But there was another possibility of putting bishop a8 with the idea of knight d5 trying to exchange off a few pieces. It looks weird, but it's possible. Rook uh, e4 was played and now I want you to pause this video and figure out what black should do. So in this position, black came up with this very nice idea and I liked it a lot, which is knight, uh, sorry. This was suggested to me by Biswa when I had given him this position, but this is not a good move because after e5, the knight is kind of misplaced here and I'm going to kick it away. Magnus came up with a great idea here, which was rook e8. And such moves are very difficult to play, but at the same time, very powerful. It's a little move putting the rook opposite the queen and also preparing just bishop f8 here, improving the position very slightly. Prague went queen d2. I was wondering if bishop e5, bishop f8 and bishop a8 is possible because next move you can think of knight d5 and it is playable. But he went queen d2 and now Magnus dropped it back there are all sorts of threats yeah this pawn is slightly soft b4 could come in the position and here Prague played queen f4 and Magnus instantly noticed that now knight takes d5 is a possibility so but not here because knight takes d5 attacks the queen he first went b4 moving the king uh, knight away and now he played knight a4 there were tactical possibilities here with bishop f7, king f7, knight d5. But after queen e6, it seems like it's not working totally. Knight f6, g f6. You can't take with the knight, by the way, here because this would hang. But g f6 and the position is interesting. Yeah, like white has some compensation, but black is doing okay. He has to defend accurately, which, I mean, you can expect Magnus to, to do. Uh... But b4, knight a4 was played and now he took here. You can't take on b6 because of knight f4. If you take on d7, I take back. You take here, I take here and I am a pawn up. So knight d5 was met with rook d5 and here Magnus went wrong. He played queen e6. Queen c6 would have been better, keeping everything controlled. This is defended. Threat is c4. You really have to be careful. Like a move like rook d1 will lose instantly to c4. And this becomes a very recurring idea in this position, the c4 plan. 
But when Magnus played Queen e6, but I've got his chance here, and it is white to play. What would you play in this position? Here, white should have taken on c5, and I don't know if Prague missed this. He thought for four minutes nearly, but he did not play this. Uh, because after take, 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 he gets this. And yes, he might have considered queen b3 here. It is possible. By the way, uh, knight c5, I think I can just take on b8. I don't need to take. But if you start with bishop c5, I take, take and then take here. Uh, queen b3 and now bishop d4. And white is doing quite okay here. So Prague missed this chance, you know, this tactical opportunity with LPDO, loose pieces drop off. But he went rook d1 and this was a positional error. And now you have to think, what should black do here? So firstly, one of the moves that is very strong and Carlson actually played a great move was rook a8. And full points to you if you find, find this, because the idea is c4 and somehow it cannot be stopped. The other move is c4 directly. If you saw this, well, you are even stronger than Magnus. Because after take, you now play rook a8 and this knight is trapped. It's very difficult to defend it if you go rook a1. Now I take on e4, takes, takes and black is better. Well, one move which comes to mind directly is why not take pawn on e4, but after take, take, rook d7, bishop d7, rook d7, c4. If you play b take c4, then after rook a8, again trouble here, <coughs> rook a2, rook d2, b3, great position for black, he's close to winning because the b3 pawn is very strong. But queen e4, queen e4, rook e4, rook d, oops, sorry, rook d7, bishop d7, c4, maybe g3 here. And after c3, bishop c1, and it seems like white can hold this position. I mean, not hold, but at least fight on. So rook a8 by Magnus was great move. Prague went back queen c1, trying to play against c4. Magnus snatched a pawn. Now you can't take here on d7 because take, take, rook d7 is met with rook a d8. And clearly everything is very loose. Threat is after take on d8, take on a d8 is queen e2 with the idea of rook d1. Just kind of unstoppable here. So h3 was played by Prague, a quiet move, hoping to, you know, the main problem also for black is what to do. You can't develop your bishop because d7 hangs, you can't bring your knight because bishop f6, you can't play it here, it's hanging. So it's not easy for black to unravel. Rook a7 was a nice move, putting more defense to the d7 knight. And now Prague went queen d2. Queen went back. Knight h4, queen e6. And at this point, if both sides had like an hour on the clock, this game would have been not very interesting because Magnus is a pawn up. But both sides had two minutes on the clock. And that is where things started getting very intense. Prague now played knight f5. I think queen f4 would have put even more pressure on black's position. Although black is better, but has to find many accurate moves. But knight f5. And now, here, Magnus had a good move at his disposal. I want you to pause the video and try to think what that is. The move is bishop b7. And it is not simple. Firstly, this is bad because of queen takes f5. Black is better and completely in control. But knight h6 can deter you. And after queen h6, the point of it is that after you take queen takes, g takes, rook d7, white is equal. But the, here the move is bishop d5. What a move. And now when you come back here, bishop b3 attacking a4 and d1. I was very, very impressed if, you know, this variation you could calculate, I would be very impressed. The main point is that the queen does not have any retreat here, which attacks any of the black pieces. That's what makes this line very nice. The other possibility here is to take g takes h6. 
But then after rook d7, queen g6, threatening mate in one, by the way, <laughs> f4. Here, I would like you to pause the video and try to figure out what should black do. So there are many moves that win, but one of the prettiest is bishop c6. And if you found this amazing, what happens after rook a7? Well, again, think, pause the video, and try to figure out what should black do. The only move to win here is rook d8. Tremendous move. Well, if you take here, then mate. Otherwise, I take on d1 and you lose the rook because you can't control this. The queen is overloaded on d2. Okay, so by the way, knight at 6, you can also play gh6 here. Uh, that's what we saw right now. But Magnus went here instead of bishop b7, c4. And this was the moment where Prag should have literally jumped at this opportunity of taking on g7 with the bishop you know this is this could have muddied the waters immensely take take fork there take and now okay if you give a check that is lost because knight f6 you take here knight d5 black wins but you start off with rook d6 and now if queen e5 that is bad because I take, take <coughs> and rook d5, threatening rook g5. Black is definitely facing some problems here. So you start with queen e7. And now when I take, by the way, check here does not work because take here and c3. Black is winning once again because of his bad knight and the passer here. Again, not easy to assess, but black is better. So no check, but you take here, king here. And now this is a position where if this had come up on the board with one minute on the clock for both sides, anything could have happened. 32 moves, eight more moves to make before you reach move 40. Um, rook 1, d5, knight e5, black is better. Rook 6, d4 is possible knight f8 is like the defense here rook c4 the position still goes on black is still better but not easy the other move which i thought is very interesting is knight b2 the point being after c3 you go rook d5 threatening rook g or maybe you bring the other rook to d5 threatening rook g5 and now knight e5 you go knight d3 if you take i have rook g5 check so you go back and then I go knight f4 and I'm putting pressure here. I'm not sure if, uh, you know, black can, white can break through, but there's too much pressure. And black has to find moves like c2, rook c6. It is very, very complicated, this entire position. So Prag also was low on time. So he couldn't find bishop g7. He played queen d4 and now Magnus finished it off. He first found knight f6, great move. Uh, if you take on a7, I take on d5. So he went knight b6, but now a very nice move. c3, shutting down the bishop. And after knight c8, queen d5, queen d5, knight d5. Uh, take on a7. Okay, right now you are a piece up, but after this it's equal. And the b2 pawn is about to queen after knight c3. So Prague went here. But rook, B, rook e2, threatening knight c3. And here Pragnananda resigned. Uh, I felt that this entire game, which lasted just 34 moves, was filled with so much energy and so many ideas. Magnus played so well. Pragnananda also brought in a lot of creativity in the game. But in the end, Magnus showed why he is the world champion. Well, this was the first of their classical encounters. I'm glad I have analyzed it deeply. I also commentated on it live. Uh, but I think this is not the last. They will meet many, many times and it will be a pleasure to follow both these great players. For now, Magnus is clearly better than Prague, but the gap will slow, you know, like narrow down as the years pass by. This is Sagasha signing off. Bye-bye.